My dad had a lot of pornography in the house, and so there were not a lot of restrictions about where not to go in the house. So as a six-year-old child, I found that stash and began to read those things, and it really corrupted and polluted my mind. Then there was the abuse. My mother abused me for 14 years. Um, it was a very painful situation of uh, just constant abuse, constant anger, um, just constant physical abuse, and I have scars to this day that were inflicted upon my physical body as a little boy. And there was nothing really instilled in me um, that helped me function. James found refuge at his grandparents' house. One summer, he went to vacation Bible school. I can remember the first time that they said, Is any of you, are any of you kids want to accept the Lord? I said, I'm right there, and I accepted the Lord, and that was when I was nine years old. But back at home, the abuse continued. The beatings were very bad, and so I grew up with the concept that somehow there was something wrong with me in the eyes of God, because all the beating every day is that how would a loving God let me get beat every day? And so that's how I grew up. Because of his home life, James was a misfit at school. I acted out a lot in school and had a lot of peer problems. By the time that I'd entered into puberty, I was very disturbed. I began to run away at 13 um, to get away from the abuse. His mother kicked him out of the house when he was 14, and James went to an orphanage. But the pain of abuse still haunted his memories. He found an escape. I became habitually addicted to looking for relief from all my suffering through homosexuality. I always knew that it was wrong. I was powerless and I felt a sense of doom all the time. But gay sex alone wasn't enough and James turned to drugs. He became a thief to support his lifestyle but that didn't pay off. Fortunately or unfortunately how you look at it, I was not a good thief. I always got caught. James spent most of his adult life in and out of prison. The drugs and years of emotional pain took its toll, and James spent much of his prison time in the prison psychiatric ward. In those padded cells, did you ever cry out to God? I cried out to God every time. After one stint in prison, James went on a four-day binge of sex and drugs and contracted HIV. Well, this is it. And this is what I had been expecting, my doom. And... In reality, though, it brought me to the place of really coming to the realization, you know, I'm going to die, and I'm going to go before the Lord. And that began that, I believe, final push to say, I've had enough of this. But James wasn't ready to give up his lifestyle, and he went back to prison. His cellmate had AIDS and was dying. I knew he was going to die in the prison because he was already sick. And the Lord told me, you're looking at yourself. If you don't change now, if you don't make those uh, transition to what God wants you to do, then you are looking at yourself. And the Lord put me with that guy, so I would have to be forced to make that ultimate decision. I was either going to die, I was going to end up like that guy, or I was going to finally say, I've had enough, and I'm going to finally just do what God has required of me. And what did you do? And I changed. Because I didn't, I just came to that decision that I just didn't want to go out of this life in disobedience to God like that fellow did. You might be surprised to learn that James didn't leave his San Diego neighborhood. He stayed so he could help bring hope to his community. Every day while he walks the streets and prays, James confronts his own past. Well, this is the place that I was actually infected with HIV in. As you can see, the doors are open. It never shuts. It's open 24 hours a day where many men every day come in for anonymous sex, watch pornography. Many of them are doing drugs, as I was. I was a witness to what goes on in there, and uh, God's changed me, so I no longer go into those places. But unfortunately, and it's very painful to me, that the doors are still open, and many more lives are being destroyed. As he prays over his neighborhood, James says he wants to be a walking testimony to people caught in the gay lifestyle. Ultimate transformation in Jesus Christ does take place because I am a living example that even though I went down the darkest road possible and suffered all the consequences that that walking that road entails, ultimately transformation came because the Word of God is more powerful than all the sin that can be paraded in a man or a woman's life.